Hello there, welcome back to another exciting episode on Edge News 360, where we provide you with weekly updates on happenings in the educational sector. My name is Delphine Anaba Ousu Press. Coming up, the APSA Bank donates 30 computers to support the Apolisi MAJHS in the northern region. Nagrat calls the abolition of the double track system. In our News and Focus segment, we will delve into a conversation with three advocates of Plan International in celebration of International Day of the Girl Child. We think women need to speak up more, so they invest in themselves, making sure that their voices are being heard, and then the outward investments where we give them the platforms to be able to make their voices heard. There are details for these and more right here on Edu News 360. Thank you for staying with us. Now to our first story. The APSA Bank has supported the Yapalisi MA Junior High School with 30 computers to equip the students with practical ICT knowledge. The bank has also renovated the classroom and furnished it to academic work better. There is more in the following report. An emotional moment for the girls prefect of the Yapal CMA Junior High School when her school received computers. Nashiru Memuna attends a government school but has never used a computer even though her school is in the northern regional capital Tamale. She therefore could not hold back her tears knowing that she can have access to these computers to learn. This she believes would help her achieve her aim. I was crying because I want to be like her when I also grows up so that I can help my colleagues who are attending government schools. It means a lot to me. When we have the computers, it can make us learn. so that we can also become some people in the future. Manager of AFSA Bank, Ellen Ohene Afwakwa, said seeing Memuna emotional has energized AFSA Bank and they will do more, adding that technology is key for the future of this generation. We felt it was fulfilling and it also energized us to do more. For us in AFSA, we believe that we need to empower Africans tomorrow together, one story at a time. And this really is a form of inspiration for us to do more. The world is changing. We are in a global village now. And being technologically savvy is key for the growth of this country and also the development of the children of this country. So for us, we feel that it's something that we need to really focus on and do more of those. Yeah, we are energized to do more. And I know my team and I are committed to do more. We believe that we need to give back to society. And this is our way of saying thank you to God for how far he's brought us. We'll be doing more. Madam Ellen added that they earlier supported the Tamale Technical University with some computers. She said this is the second school in the area. Earlier this year, we donated 50 computers to Tamale Technical University. So this is the second one in this community. But this is our third time that the Corporate and Investment Banking Unit pulled resources together to support schools. We did one orphanage and we did one Catholic school. So this is our third school. We believe that technology is key for the future of the kids of this country. And we need to empower the future of children of this country. Hence this donation. Yeah, we gave 30 computers and finish the room with furniture and also did the painting and all that to make sure that it's conducive for the computers to function very well. The headmistress of the school, Miss Antoinette Adams, said the donation is timely and will help the school. This uh, donation wouldn't have come any other time rather than today. A time when we are in a global digitization where children need uh, to be computer literate. We are very grateful. Government introduced the double track system two years into the free SHS program to accommodate the growing students' population, promising to end it after five years. Nagrat is also asking the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service 
to terminate the double track system at the senior high school level. Addressing the press, the president of Nagrat, Angel Kabanu, said the increase in student enrollment and the limited time allocated for breaks and vacation is putting pressure on teachers and management. It has been some seven years ago that the government instituted and initiated the free senior high school program. Associated with the free senior high school is the introduction of the double track system. The reason why the double track was introduced according to government was for the system or the track system to take care of the growing numbers of students because the facilities in the schools <coughs> at that time could not bear the numbers. Government also promised us at that time that within five years, the double track system will be a thing of the past, where they will ask the Ghana Education Service Trust Fund to put up facilities and structures in the school to cater for the increased numbers. Unfortunately, the five years period elapsed two years ago. And yet, 40% of senior high schools in this country are still running the double track system. The double track is coming up with attendant problems and challenges. One, the increasing number of students in the schools have placed untold burden and pressure on school management and teachers in managing and handling our various senior high schools. For example, administrators in the schools do not have any period for break and rest at all. Our kitchen staff also continue to work all year round. And then the house staff, and when I say the house staff, I'm talking about the senior house master or mistress, house masters and mistresses, assistant house masters and mistresses, running, managing students all year round. Another problem with the double track system was the extension of the school time, the teaching period from 40 minutes to one hour. In spite of this, there is untold pressure on the Ghanaian teacher in maintaining a semblance of tranquility and peace in our schools. As we speak, we do not even know whether a double track system is being run. Since the two track system is now metamorphosed <coughs> into a strange system of a year group going to school and a year group going back home. So the double track of two different cohort of students have it is metamorphosed into a new system, the name of which I cannot mention, or I do not know what name it is at this period. Joy Lennon also took to the streets to hear people's opinion on the abolition. For me, I think it should be abolished. Um, purposely because um, the double track system is not helping out our education these days. Uh, you see the kids today, when you ask them, they said they are in the yellow, tomorrow they are in the green. And the time frame between those two is too short that uh, it barely works. The time we were in school then, even in the, during the full course, uh, it wasn't easy. And now that uh, they have enough to go to school like three months or like less than three months, then they will come back for another set to go. For me, I think it's not okay. It needs to be abolished. Because they barely learn. And when they come home to... So for me, I think it needs, to, it needs to be abolished. I feel like, yeah, I think it should be abolished because most of the time, they don't get time to learn and I see the curriculum. It's very long and when they break, break. And at times, I was, um, I also experienced the double track and then our teachers had issues. We couldn't finish our syllabus and that affected us too. And then it's like extra course. When you come home, you need to go for classes. 
And I think it should be abolished and then go to the normal system and it would help. Uh, I think uh, the introduction of the double track system, yes, has its good side and, 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 and so also has its bad side. But I think the one bad aspect of the uh, double track system is that you realize that students spend uh, less time on campus. They spend more time when they go home. So at the end of the day, you realize that they go on vacation and it's parents have to spend more, okay, in terms of paying for classes for their awards. So I think in terms of cost, yes, it, it, their parents are incurring a lot. Now, in terms of the contact hours, because they are spending more, uh, more of, the, uh, of, uh, of the days at home, we realize that they have less contact hours. So they spend less time, uh, we teachers spend less time with the students. So uh, we do not have ample time to cover the syllabus. So even if we do, it's probably in a, in a haste or in a rush. So I think the, uh, on the average, the double track system should be abolished and we should go back to the, uh, the formal system. Because with the formal system, yes, we spend more time on campus. So when that happens, we, we get ample time to uh, go to the syllabus with the students. Comparatively, when you compare the double track system with that one, it's like we are in a haste because, hey, one track uh, has to cover the syllabus uh, uh, in a fast manner for the other track to come. So it's like, I realize it's in a, a haphazard or rush manner. But with the uh, formal system that we're having, students, uh, uh, teachers have, have ample time to uh, have contact, more contact hours with the students to take, their, to take them through the, the syllabus. But I, I think uh, some people are also of the view that uh, the looking at uh, considering the getting more students on board, get, getting more students on board, uh, the double track system has uh, uh, has done what uh, what a lot of good than harm because like because of the track system, we are able to get more students on board. However, we must also consider the quality. It's not about the quantity, but it's about uh, how well we are able to train the students. Bear it in mind that, yes, even though we are training students, we are not training students just in one aspect. We are training students in a, co in a cognitive manner, two, in an affective manner, two, three, in the, uh, in the psychomotor. So we are developing students holistically. So I think we need more time, more ample time, more contact hours with the students so that students will be able to le learn very well, co cover a lot, not only just learn to pass exams, but at a school, they will, they will be able to appreciate whatever, whatever they study uh, in school. And that will have impact in their lives positively. Thanks so much. Well, in my opinion, I don't think it's the best. Because I believe um, the old system is, is the best. That was the system I went through. And I think the people who designed it that time, I think they've thought about it very well. And they knew it is the best system. So this new system of double tracking is not really helping. I believe that uh, there should be consistency when it comes to learning. There shouldn't be breakage in learning because there are so many things in the system that tends to, to take away the attention of the youth or these children. So if there are breakages in terms of one group coming to school, they go on a break. Another group coming also to school, they go on a break. I don't think it's the best because they tend to be occupied with certain other things like the social media and other things which makes learning inconsistent. As part of the Breast Cancer Awareness this month, Joy Learning educates viewers on what breast cancer is. Breast cancer is a disease in the cells of the breast that grows out of control. There are different kinds of breast cancer. The kind of breast cancer depends on which cell in the breast that turns into cancer. There is more in the following report. Healthy cells are the basic building blocks of all tissue and organs in the body. But when cell DNA, the cell's wiring, is damaged, mutated cells begin to rapidly reproduce without following the pre-wired plan. Aggressive cell growth can form a tumor, or mass of tissue, that like each individual cell, does not function as originally intended. These abnormal cells, or group of cells, can progress 
into the disease known as cancer. Breast cancer usually begins either where the milk is being produced, the lobules, or in the milk ducts. Lobular carcinoma in situ, LCIS, is a precancerous condition that forms and is contained in the lobules. Invasive lobular carcinoma is a type of cancer that develops and breaks through the lobules with the potential to spread to other areas of the body. Ductal carcinoma in situ, DCIS, is a type of cancer that forms in the milk ducts and is considered non-invasive because it has not spread to any surrounding tissue. If the cancer has spread beyond the milk ducts, it is known as ductal carcinoma. Less frequently, breast cancer can originate in the stromal tissue, the fatty and fibrous connective tissue of the breast. Treating breast cancer as soon as it's discovered is very important. If left untreated, the cancer cells may invade healthy breast tissue or lymph nodes. Once in the lymph system, cancer can spread more easily to other parts of the body. In our international news, a South African kindergarten teacher allegedly attacked in a Chinese school in Shanghai, fears for her safety and those around her. Nolusindo Leko has forced to leave China following a viral video showing how her employer allegedly physically assaulted her. In the video titled, My Worst Year Abroad, Kleko alleges the school's human resource manager punched her in the face, leaving her bruised. I think, uh, firstly, so sorry that something like this happened to you, especially in another country, you know, where you don't have any family or friends around you. Uh, but I think, you know, just for our viewers uh, who hasn't seen your video, just explain to us exactly what happened to you. Uh, it was a uh, Wednesday uh, afternoon. I was at the kindergarten to sign uh, an agreement to dissolve my contract, which is something that they had been trying for a while. And so when I realized that the agreement, because I had been there the previous day to do the same thing, when I realized that they had altered the agreement to something that was something I hadn't agreed on, I decided that I wasn't going to sign it. And while I was trying to leave, they prevented me from leaving, saying I should uh, leave the agreement behind. But part of it had my signature because the previous day I'd signed part of it. Um, and then because I was scared that they would still use it because it had my signature and parts of the pages were changed from like the previous day, I decided to rip it apart because they wouldn't let me leave. And that is when the HR manager, um, who was also in, in the room, it was me, him, and uh, the principal, and he punched me and then held me down on the couch, prevented me from leaving his office, took my phone while I tried to reach my phone to take a video. He took my phone. And then um, I still don't know to this day how I got out of his office because they had locked the door preventing me from leaving. I managed to get out. I ran, like I said on the video, I was running in the passage. He was at the stairway, blocking the stairway from, um, blocking me from passing by him. I remember in that moment just asking him why, like, leave me alone, you've punched me. And his response was, you punched me first. And then I ran the other way and he ran after me and he was humming. I think that's the most disturb disturbing part of the whole thing is because he was humming. And I think he was humming because he wanted me to fall or maybe look back but I kept on telling myself like don't look back at this point I uh, had my shoes came off my sock came off because I was trying to get away from him and I was kicking him like trying to get away I managed to get out of the building and there was this one lady who I trusted so much so so much mm. and she shouted at the security guard and told him to close the gate I remember just turning around and looking at her and like, why are you doing this? Oscar punched me. She never even looked me in the eye. She was looking directly in the security guard. Mm. Um, fortunately for me, instead of closing the gate, the security guard opened the gate. And then I saw this opportunity and I just ran past the gate and it immediately closed after me. So I was alone on the streets. I uh, had no socks on. I had no bag. I had no shoes on. I was just there i didn't even know what to do at this point i could feel my eye was getting swollen 
I remember coming across, initially I came across an older Chinese lady. I asked her if she had a phone because I knew the emergency number in China, but she couldn't understand what I was saying. Mm. And that is when I came across a younger Chinese lady and then I asked her to call the cops. I asked her if she could speak English initially and mm. she said yes. And I asked her to call the cops. And I think that's the moment I started to cry. Yeah, so and, and that's at, at this point, what happened. No, listen, so when, when you, she called the cops, the cops arrive. Um, how were they in assisting you? Were they helpful? Um, and, and did you then also reach out to the local authorities there to, to help you in this situation? And, and how did they respond to that? Uh, by local authorities, are you referring to the SA? No, the Chinese authorities. Uh, no. Uh, so basically, uh, I called the cop. Oh, it. So this lady helped me call the cops and the cops arrived. Mm. But when I arrived at the kindergarten, they also had called the cops. So there were cops there already. And they had gathered my everything that belonged to me on the table. And then from then onwards, they basically looked at the office and said there was no CCTV. And he was telling them that I, I hit myself on the couch. And so there was no CCTV in his office, so there was no proof. I just have a brief voice recording on my phone of me telling him to not touch me and basically me screaming and then my phone stopped recording. I think I might have touched it or something, I don't know. Mm. Um, there were no other authorities I was in contact with other than the cops. The cops were not helpful at all. They mm. Because there is a CCTV in the passages of the kindergarten. Every place in China has CCTVs. And I asked, and I told them there's a CC, there's both the cameras in the footage might have been should have been recorded, but they never pursued the school to ask for CCTV footage. And when we got to the police station, and I was I kept on telling them about this, mm. and they said I had no proof, and I couldn't prove anything. I couldn't prove that he hit me. Mm. I could, and I told them I was going to call my embassy, and they told me like my embassy wouldn't be able to do anything. You are still watching Edu News 360. We shall take a quick break and when we come back, we will bring you our News in Focus segment.